Game adaptations of popular media has been a thing since the invention of the games console. From movies, TV shows and even food products. Some are great, some are awful, and others being cash grab advertisements. Then the beloved and much loved series South Park thought they'd have a couple of cracks at it. There have been quite a few South Park games in the past few years, but none of them really captured the soul of the series. They felt like they could have been any franchise but with a reskin. There was a first person shooter, Chef's Love Shack, South Park Rally, and even a tower defence game. They were a bit hit and miss. But after a while, a new game was developed that had a unique story within the South Park universe, with RPG elements and allows you to explore this little redneck town in Colorado. So today, we're looking at South Park, the stick of truth. Trey and Matt always liked old fantasy tropes when it came to video games. So you play a silent protagonist, the new kid, entering the town of South Park, who are quickly recruited by the boys in their newest game of fantasy warfare, an amalgamation of Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, and a number of fantasy games. Once recruited by the wizard King Cartman, you're thrown into an adventure that slowly but surely spirals out of control. You've got to love the design of this game. The idea is that the kids made all their own costumes and weapons, so it has this homemade crappiness about it. Bits of plywood, cardboard cutouts, and things you'd find lying around your house. It has a childish charm that makes perfect sense in this world, so it adds a believability to their make-believe. One of the first choices you make in the game is that you need to choose a class. Fighter, which is all tanking and dealing damage. Mage, which sacrifices physical strength for stronger special abilities. Thief, which uses status effects to whittle the foes down and finish them off for massive damage. And finally, Jew, which acts as a hand-to-hand -hand grappler, whose attacks increase as their health gets lower. I chose Jew, obviously. I mean, you can learn a sick move called Jew Jitsu. Why wouldn't you choose them? The enemies you face in the game can vary quite a bit. It all starts out innocent as the kids are just fighting other kids, with homemade weapons and gardening tools. And when you get a few hours in, you're being glass bottled by smackheads and being shot at by the FBI. Got to love the juxtaposition of playfully knocking someone out and then trying to kill them. The game itself is one part exploration and one part combat. The combat is the tried and true turn based. Some people might find this style dated, but since I've been playing turn based games for years I feel very nostalgic with this style. Pokemon, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, these are classics, and Stick of Truth is a simplified but good version of this. You always hear the same complaints with this style. It's not realistic, why are they just standing there? Why would you take turns hitting each other? But there's so much more strategy involved because of this. Do you go all out of offensive abilities, going for higher damage with your PP abilities? Use harmful side effects like bleed or grouse out to slowly take down your opponents? Do you go for another attack or heal yourself to make yourself safer for the long term battle? There are so many layers to this battle system it cannot be seen as basic. It borrows a little from Super Paper Mario in a sense as well, as there are quick time events during some of your abilities. Certain inputs are needed so the moves can be completed or added effects included. They're never that complex and I feel like it's more busy work than adding any form of strategy. There's also the farting system. Your character receives special training to allow you to control your ass, giving you special fart powers. Inside battle, you can use your fart powers to supercharge your abilities for more damage. And outside of battle, you can use farts to gross out enemies, cause explosions on open flames and even destroy barricades giving you multiple ways to deal with situations while exploring, even defeating enemies before entering the battle. It feels great walking around South Park. Everywhere you've seen in the show, all the boys' houses, Jimbo's shop, City Walk, Stark's Pond. With the same cartoony style, you feel like you're creating your own episode. In every place you go, there's secret equipment and clothing to find. So by exploring, you're actually making your character stronger. There's development by going off and searching people's garages, trash cans, and the occasional side mission with rewards like weapons or Facebook friends. The game has its own ambient soundtrack, a set of perfect tunes that are complementary to the gameplay and enhance the experience. 
There can be a lot of exploration and going back and forth in the game sometimes, and the songs never get boring or overused. You can tell effort was put into the atmosphere of each area. There's little sprinkles of love for the fans as well. When walking into some shops, you can hear songs that have been sung in the show, like funny little easter eggs to find. There are two things about this game that I can criticise. One is that it's very easy. Once you understand the equipment and battle system, it's super easy to stack up multiple status effects at once, burn them, gross them out, and make them bleed. And in between turns, enemies will lose giant chunks of the health. You can even use this against some of the so-called tougher bosses, and they'll fall quicker than an unwanted child down some sharp stairs. The second is a real issue in my opinion. Censorship. What is the point of the Peggy system, or age restricting, if you're still going to literally pull out chunks of the game because you think they're too naughty? An 18 rating in this day and age surely means that anything goes. But I think it's because they look down on games as a media. An 18 movie could have people being skinned or their mouths sewn to arseholes in a chain, but we're still toe dipping in playable games. It to me feels like those who restricted the content of this game must have a real disconnect to the modern world. Games are not just these things that little kids play at arcades or have child friendly adventures at home. They're as varied as any other media. It'd be like ripping pages out of a book or blocking a sex scene in a movie with a picture of a kitten. It's a joke and I hope this doesn't become a trend. There has to be a balance in games like these that draw on specific source material. If it's just funny and lax in the gameplay department, then it won't be a fun experience and progression will feel like a tour rather than a reward. And if the gameplay and your input is the main centre point of the game, with the story and canon taking a backseat, then fans of the show will feel cheated that it's not a true South Park experience. But in my view, this game creates an excellent balance. Which is why, in my opinion, this game should receive top priority in the collection. It's a truly well-crafted game. I believe that this game should be on everyone's shelves and would brighten any gamer's day. Thank you very much for watching my South Park Stick of Truth review today. If you like what you saw, please give it a like. I publish new videos every Friday. And if you want to see more, please subscribe and ring that bell to let you know when new videos are available. See you all next week.